All right, welcome back. No intro. Let's get started. To be well behaved, but today's kind of a spin on that idea. We're talking about how, as humans, we can be better pet owners, especially when in public, in a lesson on pet etiquette, if you will. And we're happy to welcome back Catherine Newman. Did y'all hear what he said? Listen up. And you see the title. It says tips for responsible dog ownership. I need y'all to pay close attention to how many times they say dog ownership. See if you can spot the times when they slip in pet ownership. Well, we talk often about training dogs to be well behaved, but today's kind of a spin on that idea. We're talking about how as humans, we can be better pet owners, especially when in public, in a lesson on pet etiquette, if you will. And we're happy to welcome back Catherine Newman back to the studio with a new friend, Ozzy. This is Ozzy. He's a recent graduate of our board and train program. He's so calm and cool. And auto automatically, and listen, this happens everywhere they take these things. They're slobbering all over the floor everywhere they go they have their toxic disgusting anus planted directly on the floor at all times now i know this is about what responsible pet ownership looks like that's part of it you know how rude how disrespectful it is to go into someone's home or business and dispense dog saliva all over the floor. Okay, so that's violation number one. Excuse me, number two. Just having the thing there is a problem. And I don't know what it is. We have a blue floor here in the studio, like the, the part where all the cameras yeah. slide around. Most dogs are terrified of the blue floor. Oh yes, I've had experience with that. What's up with that? Is it because it's slippery or because it looks like water? It's like, what is this? I, I think all of the above. Yeah. All of the above. Cool. Why does she have to rub it nonstop? Why? She's trying to keep it calm. Really bad look. Where you go onto a TV show or whatever, and in a clear attempt to keep the thing calm from wanting to attack someone, you got to rub it incessantly nonstop. You ask me, that is pathetic. It looks pathetic. That's overt, shameful behavior and ignorant. I was scared of the blue floor at first yeah. too. Yeah. All right, let's talk about pedicate. Yep. What's your, what's your? Pedicate. See it? They wrote it right there. Pedicate first suggestion for dog owners when they're going out to events, farmers markets, walks on the, uh, the hiking trail, etc. First of all, to be considerate and to recognize that a You're being inconsiderate bringing these things into a store. That was his question. He asked about taking them into stores. Going out to events, farmers markets, walks on the, uh, the hiking trail. Farmers markets, etc. You know, like tractor supply, places like that. You can bring your dog, right? Uh, Home Depot. It's inconsiderate bringing these things inside of places like that, narrow hallways and whatnot. Hard floor gets slobber all over. Somebody slip and fall. Then urinate somewhere. Somebody slip, bust their head. Nasty. You're just disgusting. First of all, to be considerate and to recognize that, especially in a lot of these merchants that we're allowed to go into today, is whether it's Bachman's or Ace Hardware or a Look lot at that of nasty, slobbering, drugged up mutant. I know some dog lovers look at, well, look at how well behaved it is. It's drugged up. Each and every time they bring these things on the news, are you kidding? They drug them up. And that's pathetic. You got to drug them up and rub it and still got to rub it nonstop just to keep it calm. Or Ace Hardware 
or a lot of these small businesses that welcome dogs. See, look at her. Be considerate um, and, and be responsible. Mean? Well, first of all, let's take our dog potty and make sure that they've avoided before yeah. they go in. How about that? And she's a dog trainer. She's the owner of a uh, kennel club. We're going to get to that. She's saying right before you take that nasty, dangerous mutt into the store, let it urinate and defecate. And people, remember, dogs don't wipe their anus after they defecate. Okay, so what's going to happen? Nasty, disgusting excrement factory takes a dump, urinates, it gets all over its body, its hind legs, its tail, and it walks in the store and tracks it all through there, fanning its nasty tail. Destroying the environment inside the store. Inside. You don't want to drop it off in the middle of shields. Perfect. That's a great way to frame And look at this. Look at this woman. You know, if that thing launches an attack, she's going to be worthless. You know, she's going to be in the way. That's how worthless these types of people are. They're going to be in the way. Because these are the types of women that grab an umbrella and start tapping it to get it to stop. Is it? I love Sorry it. to say it that yeah. way, but that's what we're talking well, about. You here. did and I didn't, but yes, fantastic. So the other thing is gain control before you go inside. It's one thing if you're taking a seven, eight, nine, twelve week puppy in for socialization. But if you're taking. Look at that aisle. What if there's somebody with their little ones walking down the aisle? I tell you what, if I was a dad and I saw a nutter like this, I would feel the desire, the need to front kick them in the mouth. That's how offended I would be. How inconsiderate can you possibly be? And she starts off saying you need to be considerate. Let's continue. Taking a two-year-old dog like Ozzy in, you should have some semblance of control. Make them behave in the store. Look at that. And As I just paused it, this is a wad of saliva right here. Mid-fall. Nasty, inconsiderate, and disgusting. About time somebody called these people out for their degenerative lifestyle. So primitive. Dog like Ozzie you should have some semblance of control. Make them behave in the store and recognize that there might be other dogs there, so don't let them lead out. In what an imbecile you have to be. She got some nerve. Going on to a news show, as if this gonna make her look good gonna make dogs look good in front and then we have an um have some semblance of control make them behave in the store and recognize that there might be other dogs there so don't let them lead out in front and then we make them behave in the store we've seen y'all try that several times once they launch an attack you owners will make an attempt to control it. And guess what? Every time you've tried, I'm talking about dog owners, every single time you've tried, you failed. You failed. That's the problem. Y'all can't control these things. Y'all keep telling the general public to do things that's not even possible, especially for certain types of individuals. For weak individuals it's more difficult for strong individuals it's not fail proof I'm strong I don't care how strong you are the force of a dog especially a bully breed on four limbs they got more stability and torque than you that's why they seem so powerful. That's why they are so powerful. 
even though they may weigh 70 pounds and you're about 200 pounds. Still can't control them. We have an um, unexpected greeting with another untrained dog, and right. now we have an episode. Again, imagine if you was walking down this narrow aisle. Boy, the, the desire to teep them in the teeth would be so strong. I couldn't help but to say something to her. Like, what the are you doing with that thing in here? You idiot. You know, some nutters do stuff like this, trying to socialize these dumb mutts. What if your attempt to socialize them goes wrong like it does all the time? Again, you're nothing but a threat to society. You're a danger to the, these people are the worst types of people to have in your community. The very worst to have as a neighbor. There. So, so do you shorten the leash? Do you we gain? heal. You yep. heal. And we that's heal a standard in the store. We heal and we sit, or at least a controlled walk. Make yeah. sure our dog is under control. Hi, Ozzy. You know what else is funny? Uh, these bully breeds, quite often, they weigh 50 to 60 pounds. I bet you anything, this woman right here could not deal with a 40-pound dumbbell. 40, 45 plate. That thing would be able to snatch her all over the place. And the dog weighs more than that and is on four limbs. Nobody is responsible if they are in possession of these things. The, the other thing is that when we enter these facilities is to make sure that we recognize that they are there to do business. So if you take a look at this next video coming up, um, Ozzy and I are doing some training around some Yeti coolers and we're practicing on sit stays and it's at the hardware store right when you come in. Being a narc, looking for attention, getting off on making people feel uncomfortable. That's all they do. Wanting to cause a scene. Nobody want to see you bring no mutt into no store. And that's why many of these hardware places, you don't get my money. And I can't wait till we grow in numbers. That way we can all be on code. Stop shopping here. Stop shopping there. Don't go to these places. They allow dogs in there. That day can't come soon enough. So a great place to do sit stays with Ozzy to proof those because we've got guests. Or Nasty. Just nonstop slobbering. You know how toxic and dangerous dog saliva is? Ask anybody who's been attacked by a dog. They will tell you the wound is throbbing. It hurts. It's more painful than other injuries. It's because of the saliva. This should be considered a safety hazard, a health hazard. Get out of here. It's like having a container of toxic chemicals with the lid off. Unquarantined. Where it's actually mobile. Great place to do sit stays with Ozzy to proof those because we've got guests. A, 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 another thing, constantly putting her hand on its mouth. Then what's she going to do? She's going to start pressing buttons at the checkout lane. She's going to be touching everything with her nasty, disgusting, toxic fingers. She's going to reach out her nasty hand and shake somebody else's hand. Disgusting. Um, customers coming and going. But now we have... Um, we have Ed and a customer coming up to look at Eddie's or Yeti's. My job is to get out of the way. Let them look at do this. It. How inconsiderate. How unnecessary. This is not responsible, responsible uh, dog ownership, pet ownership. What are you talking commerce. about? And then I always make a point to buy something, whether it's light bulbs or 
paper toweling or a small nasty hand. because sweet. again nasty and a lot of these workers when dogs come in they'll start rubbing all along these places are disgusting all these tractor supplies these places do not go into these places avoid them if you can i understand some people might have to you know run inside of it avoid them if you can it is extra disgusting in places like this he nutters all of the workers and whatnot rubbing all over these things and then touching people and touching other things you know these stores are in business to do business so sure. we and we want to say thank you because being able to bring our dogs is a privilege it's not an entitlement no it's okay. a violation okay so how important is positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement is how, the difference between a good dog shut up how many videos how many cases have we seen where the dog was inside of a business or store and launched an attack inside the place how many outside the place more than we can remember it is proven that these people are a hazard they are a threat to everybody around them ain't nothing positive about you being in possession of a dog out in public there's no way you can make that seem like a positive uh, neighborly friendly thing to do nutters we're going to bed on our it's like you can see the out-of-control dog, and it's not the dog's fault. Yeah, so... Listen so. to him. He said, he asked her about positive reinforcement. He says when he sees a dog out of control, it's not the dog's fault. Shut up. Whose fault? It is the dog. What is wrong with you? Not the dog's fault. Okay, so it's just naturally disruptive and dangerous. Good. Euthanize him not the dog's fault yeah so so what how, how often do you give the treats how often and why we give a lot of treats in the beginning when we are teaching and the treats are meant to simply distract the thing from wanting to attack people the rubbing same thing serve the same purpose keep their attention away from living creatures that'll eventually want to attack for no reason so she has combined several methods to keep it from wanting to attack people constant rubbing treats and medication in or shaping a new skill but at some point in time we need to enforce our commands look at that Otherwise, look at that look at that look at that disgusting disrespectful rude for you to bring a urine infested excrement infested saliva drooling all over the place creature Onto this show is disrespectful to the show. It's disrespectful to every area you enter into. I'm trying to put lipstick on this. It's disgust and dangerous. This is a health hazard. I'm going to run into a situation where our doggy says. Nasty. Hey, Look, now nasty. saliva's all over her nasty hands. Get your filthy hands away from me. You shake your nasty hand. Don't touch nothing you given to me. Give me six feet. Squirrel or that kid or that other dog is more exciting than your treats. So as a trainer, you really need to have a balanced approach. You see? You heard what she said? She confirmed what I just said or shaping a new skill but at some point in time we need to enforce our commands otherwise we're going to run into a situation where our doggy says hey that squirrel or that kid or that other dog is more exciting than your treats so as a trainer you really need to have a balanced approach Very there you go she just admitted what i said if you're not constantly feeding it it's gonna fixate on somebody's youngster you trying to project yourself as a, uh, you know, a benefit to society, to neighborhoods? Can't make this up. Keep feeding them to distract them from wanting to attack people. And then your treats. So as a trainer, you really need to have a balanced approach. Very similar to children. Okay, so be in the, okay, what about Very similar walking? to children. No, it's not. Y'all gonna stop comparing these killers to harmless entities. Y'all need to get that straight. And we it's time for another 
video like that as well. These are polar opposites. Stop comparing these killers, these adult killers, to harmless entities. Right? Oh. This is another thing, too, where... You know Look at this. Keep your dog under control. Again, how, how bad? That makes you look bad. Giving advice to people that it's not even possible. The same goes for her. That thing spaz out, want to attack somebody. She is going to lose control over it. Say it with me. You too, Catherine. You're going to lose control over it and you know it. You're going to start screaming. You're going to fall. You're going to trip and fall maybe several times over nothing. You're going to fail to stop the attack. These people are worthless when these things want to attack someone. You never know what you're going to get. And it's sort of, again, on you as the owner to be responsible in this regard. Correct. And so we have a great video sh coming up to show what not to do and what to do. So here I am with Ozzy, who's had hours and hours of training. And here comes along someone who is super distracted and he's on his cell phone and his dog is out in front. And the only two things that are missing are a flexi lead and a cup of Starbucks coffee. And he lets his dog rush up to Ozzy. Now, here's the thing. When you Did you see that? Look at how deranged that dog is. No sense of direction, of personal space, or even where it should go. The thing has no sense of what path it should take. It ran right into this woman and his dog. Like what, what? And it looked like it did it on purpose. Now maybe the dog knew her, I'm pretty sure it did familiar with her but that's still strange these things are so deranged we didn't see them do it all the time they'll walk in circles pace fall trip over the wall put these things out of their misery out in front and the only two things that are missing are a flexi lead and a cup of starbucks now you heard her say speak against letting your dog walk out in front so she's trying to use Caesar's method, the alpha method, be the alpha. They all adhere to that. Keep that in mind when you see people, you see them all the time with their dog going out in front. Those types of dogs, they say, are more likely to launch an attack because they feel like they're the leader and that the alpha in dog packs always the one initiate attacks. Brooks coffee, and he lets his dog rush up to Ozzy. Now, here's the thing. When you're out with your dog and you encounter another dog, you don't know, is that dog reactive around other dogs? Is he fearful? Maybe he was under-socialized. Maybe he's... Reactive. Oh, it wasn't the dog's fault. It's just react... Oh, it's fearful. Oh, it's just a shut up. They attack because they're bloodthirsty mutants to get off on killing. They're the most established killers on the planet. They kill more often the natural predators. It's a rescue. And when you allow your dog to rush up to another dog like this, you are undermining their training and you could set that dog back for months, if not a year. And so it you, creates you, a tension that is... Yeah. How is that even possible? What well, showed you they're never trained to begin with. All they do is try to distract them with food. That's it. Yes. Dangerous. Yes, yes. I've been And even on drugs. This thing's still fixated in this new environment. Just looking for something to fixate on. Yeah, that too, with our yeah. when we had our dog. I mean, there's yeah. that initial reaction. How do, you, how do you fight against that, though? Is it a matter of getting him to sit and stay while the other dog passes, or what's the training? Well, first of all, restrain your dog. So if you have to, even if your dog isn't fully trained, short leash them, and then give space. Recognize, be aware of your surroundings. Don't be on your cell phone. Look around. If you can see that I've got my dog tight by my side and he's in heel position, dogs aren't born that way. They're trained to do that. So recognize there's a lot of training that went into this. And about 20 years ago, um, there was this movement that went through the dog world and, and it never really caught on and I really wish it did. It was you'd put a yellow ribbon on your leash and that would signify to other dog owners that, hey, oh. I don't want you to approach my dog. Maybe my right, dog is reactive. Sign. Sure. Yeah. Hey, hashtag and, yellow ribbon. And I would love to see that come back. All right, um, good deal. Because it really, 
it, it really yeah. signifies, hey, I put a lot of effort Caution. into my dog. Yeah. Caution. Yep. Leave us alone. Yep. Respectfully. Yep. Thank then, you, Catherine. Oh, one welcome. more quick? What? Real quick. I just want to give a shout out to Dev Lindahl, our photo Yes, yeah, she's the best. Who always does a great job with, with our photo shoots. Good so, for you. I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. Way to go, yep. Deb. Thanks for... Now, do you feel like this is possible? Maybe I'm wrong. Do you feel like it's possible for a person like this to 100% be trusted to restrain bully breeds that want to attack you? I don't care about the behavior of the dog that you see right here. We're talking about safety. The most important thing to guarantee the other people in society you live with. And we all know the answer to that. No. If that dog want to attack somebody else, and if it wanted to attack her, we all know there's nothing you could do to stop it. I don't care how much you smile, how much you rub that thing. I don't care how many videos you show of you walking with it. We all know you're worthless when it comes to controlling the, these things. This is what, this is not what responsible pet ownership looks like. Okay, that was the best example they could come up with, if you ask me. What does responsible pet ownership looks like? Well, it looks like everything other than the dog. What does it look like? It looks like cat ownership, rabbit ownership. This is what responsible pet ownership looks like. Turtle, rat, fish, hamster, chameleon, horse, pig, parrot, snake. That is responsible pet ownership. You own a worthless mutt, you're an irresponsible pet owner. And it really, you're just irresponsible and you're a danger. You're a criminal at that point. Calling you irresponsible pet owner, that's the wrong description. You're simply a threat to everybody around you. Now, she is the owner of About American Boarding Kennels. She is the owner and, and president and CEO, been in business, 1977. You can see she has been on, uh, what is it, Care 11 TV since 1996. She is a regular on their show. She has brought several drugged up, disgusting mutants onto the show. And each time she's endangering everyone around her and she's you know destroying the atmosphere it's not just the atmosphere the floors if it starts shaking it, you're just you know uh contaminating everything the the furniture and everything people's hair that's another thing we don't talk about enough how all that dander and filth you see us all over their body it'll be on their socks pants shirts so it's in getting in their hair too and then it gets trapped inside of their hair and then you walk in in some store or something you walk behind somebody their hair swinging all over what do you think getting thrown in your face that's why i say these people themselves their their body is nasty their bodies and everything on them is contaminated it's a concentrated area of dog filth. No such thing as a responsible dog owner. No such thing as a responsible dog owner. No such thing as a responsible dog owner. It's like saying you're a responsible lion owner. Now, when you try to do a search for, you know, guidelines on being a responsible dog owner. 
you can tell that they don't know what it involves. Just look at some of their attempts. This is the American Veterinary Medical Association. And this is crazy. They never mention having a leash. Having a dog on a leash. No, they don't mention it at all. Look at this. It's hard to find a guideline. It said lifelong care of the pet means committing to the relationship of your pet's entire life. Huh? That ain't got nothing to do with being a responsible pet owner. You telling people they have to keep it for all its worthless life? Ain't nothing responsible about that. They're just trying to sell dogs. Like, what does that have to do with anything? It's because you take care of, just because you feed your pet and give it water, don't automatically make you a responsible pet owner. Selecting a pet that is suited to your home and lifestyle. Okay, recognizing that owning a pet requires an investment of time and money. A what? Okay, again, it makes no sense. That got to do with being responsible. How am supposed to keep people safe? Keeping only the type and number of pets for which you can provide an appropriate and safe environment. This includes food, water, shelter, health care, companionship. Another goofy statement. Animals that spend intended, extended periods of time outside. They're talking about dogs. Nobody talks about how it's harmful for a cat to be outside too long. So goofy. I mean, how incriminating. You're telling us these as lethal pets become aggressive when they're outside too long? Thank you for strengthening our argument that they should be banned, that they're deranged, something wrong with them. They're abnormal. What other animal does that happen to? Allergic to being outside for too long? And the longer they're out, the more chance there is it'll try to attack somebody? That is insane. Nutters, listen to yourselves. I don't have to get up here and roast you. I can repeat the things that y'all say. And, and just point out things y'all do. That's roasting you. Can't make this up. What is this? Ensuring pets are properly identified. Micro oh, stop. Adhering to local ordinances, including license and leash requirements. <laughs> there is whole compilations of dog owners losing control of their dog. It's so prevalent. It is such the norm. There are video compilations of it. On top of that, good luck trying to compile all of the articles and news reports where they reported on dog attacks, where it was said that it was on a leash first. That's a never ending task for you. Stop with this leash requirement nonsense. Dogs on leashes, that is a proven failure. You all understand that? And that's another thing we let nutters get away with. A lot of the stuff that they say is false, not possible, and nobody points it out. So they're allowed to just keep saying it, keep saying it. No, we're going to point out how these things being on the leash means very little to nothing. Look at this. Helping to manage overpopulation by controlling your pet's reproduction through managed breeding, containment, spay neuter. Okay, you're talking about dogs. Providing preventative and therapeutic, okay, take it to the vet. Socialize it. You know, I, I read some comments where they pointed out how some dog owners, they want to socialize their uh, worthless mutt. They'll 
go to a store, public place, or worst of all, they'll take the dog to a flipping playground. Pointed out how a lot of these dog owners, they target playgrounds. Because the nutter is, oh, I need to socialize it and get it used to kids so it don't attack them. And then what happens? An attack happens as they're trying to socialize it. That's what happens in many of these cases. These nutters are trying to socialize it. All you're doing is endangering people. But according to you, you're training it to not want to attack people. No, we got to call that out. Preventing your pets from negatively impacting other people. And that's not, again, it's not possible. It's not possible. And, and don't suggest waste disposal. We all know that not all of you do that. Ridiculous. Providing exercise, mental stimulation. What is mental stimulation? That's another thing. And if you don't walk them a certain amount of time, they'll want to attack someone in the house. That do, it doesn't even sound like a real pet you're describing. That sounds like a character, a script written in a movie of a pet from outer space. Right? If it's in the home too long, it'll want to attack the people in the home. If it's outside too long, it'll want to attack the people outside. This is why you dog professionals are no longer the professionals. We are. We are. All of your credentials are null and void. Y'all said too much crazy stuff. Include your pets in your planning for an emergency or disaster, including assembling an evacuation. Shut up. It's all about taking care of the dog, pampering the dog. Does any of these suggestions keep your neighbors safe? The people inside your home safe? No. Worthless. If somebody were to do all of these things, guess what? You're still in danger. They're still a threat to the general public. So it's pretty pathetic. A lot of us been wondering, or at least I have, what exactly are you talking about when you say irresponsible dog ownership? I played a video last night with the members of some city councilwoman. She was responding to a dog attack in the city. And she said, I want to reach out to the experts, the professionals, to find out what responsible dog ownership looks like and what they think about breed specific laws basically pit bull bands so we know what she's going to be told by the nutters oh there's no difference between breeds they're going to give her nutter advice so these people are not professionals the advice that these professionals give the city councilwoman is going to make her city even more dangerous Again, they're not professionals. And I'm not even going to go over this one. The Kennel Club chimed in. 75 ways to be a responsible dog owner. Again, look at this obese woman. I don't care if you're male or female. If you're obese, it's easier for you to lose your balance Harder for you to get up. Your mobility is limited in general. Okay. <laughs> okay, you big 300 pounds. Let's see you play a game of basketball with some real athletes. Let's see how long it takes you to waddle up and down the court bouncing the ball. You're not as physically capable. Do you think this woman could protect any of us from this dog, from a bully breed? Get out of here. The world is seeing y'all as a joke at this point. 
And I believe it's catching on fast. Just to skim over some of this nonsense, look at this. None but nuttery. Nonsense. All about uh, pampering. These deranged mutants. Again, look at this thing. Look at this thing. How, how could you possibly be proud? How can you appreciate the existence of something like this? You should be ashamed to have created something that looks this horrible, something this difficult on the eyes. Dogs are hard on the eyes. Especially these bull breeds. They're an eye sore. Again, how is a tiny young dog already wrinkled in the face? We as humans, we don't associate wrink a wrinkled face with beauty. And we're the first to tell you that. Ask any elderly person you know. They will openly tell you, yeah, when I was 20, I was gorgeous. We accept that we lose our looks as our face wrinkles. These things got more wrinkles than us. These wrinkles stand up. These are big, visible wrinkles flat on the face, on surfaces that should be smooth. These things have wrinkled foreheads. And then look at how jagged and unusual the mouth is, the teeth. What are these? What is this? Look like tentacles around its lips. That ain't no attractive looking lip. They look disgusting. What are these? Look like small nipples along the rim of its mouth. It's got so much excess skin. It's hanging. You see these? This little shape, that ain't nothing but excess skin hanging. You lift that skin, perfect environment for all types of Dangerous, nasty, disgusting germs, bacteria, parasites. These things are very dangerous for our health. They're very dangerous in many ways. And there's no way to own them responsibly. You got to be kidding. There ain't nothing the majority of these people can do to stop that. I just showed a video the other night in the UK the UK got it rough right now where on uh, they was running it was a bunch of adults running away from one XL bully one XL bully and I'm, I'm gonna show it I'm gonna show y'all that here real quick oh Sorry about that. One second. Wait, okay. Yeah, I don't need to show y'all that. We all know this. There was about eight, nine adults running away from one XL bully. Just one. And they want to sit up and give us a lecture. They want us to believe that one of them can responsible, responsibly own one. Make that make sense. We should never see one adult, even one adult, running away from one of these things if you were truly able to control them. When you're out in public, several adults run for their life. Y'all can't even begin to make this argument. So, yeah. Responsible pet ownership. What do you think responsible pet ownership looks like again i believe it looks like everything other than a dog if you're a pet person that's your thing there's simply certain animals that are not meant to be kept as pets think grizzly bears no such thing as a responsible 
grizzly bear owner. Right? Grizzly bears are capable of doing what? Ripping you to shreds. Taking entire chunks off your body. That's what polar, that's what grizzly bears can do. Injure you so bad that your skeletal, your skeleton is exposed. Dogs do all that too. Again, we we as humans are very fragile. We're very fragile. Just because an animal is four times larger than a dog, it does not make that animal more of a threat or more dangerous than a dog to us. No such thing as a responsible tiger owner, lion owner. Do you understand that? So let us know what you see as a responsible pet owner. Shout out to Wandering Fuels in the super chat. It says, I hate how people had to go up to pet a dog like they've never seen a dog. Yeah. Like they've never seen a dog before. Like it's a gray parrot. Yeah. Yeah. And when grown men do it, it looks even worse. They all do that. And, you know, this is supposed to be an era of increased awareness to infections. Those rules don't apply. Those precautions don't apply when it comes to the dogs. Yeah, it's like, oh, just touch them. Saliva, urine, excrement. It's okay. Rub all over it. Take your mask off. We've seen them pull their mask down and let the dogs lick them in the face. Again, in this current era, to see a human being licking another person's face, that's seen as an a, a attack. That's assault. If you spit on someone, especially around 2020, you there's a good chance a bunch of adults will tackle you. You go somewhere and spit on somebody or lick some stranger's face, that's considered an assault. But when a dog does it, it's a kiss? No. It's not even the dog's way of kissing you. Dogs don't kiss. So the time needs to end where dogs are free from being held up to scrutiny. Shout out to everybody able to join me. It is Friday. Oh, I will most likely be back tonight if I don't. Most definitely tomorrow. Hope you're able to join me as we continue with this crusade.